Welcome back guys. In this video, we are going to be building a glowing desktop drink cooler. And so if you've ever been sitting there and your drink's been kind of getting hot after a while, that you've been sitting on your computer and working on your things, and you wish you could maintain a nice cold glass of whatever, water, Coke, whatever you're drinking, this is gonna be the thing for you. And as I mentioned, it's gonna glow, so we're gonna have a little bit of a cool LED glowing effect. And so right now you're looking at the overall design in SolidWorks. And of course you can see the little pop can that I have modeled in there. Underneath is the drink cooler. And so we are going to zoom out for a second and we're gonna take a closer look at all of the components that make up this project. And so you'll see the pop can has kind of gone out of view. And what we're left with are all of the individual components that make up this project. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking on some of these things to highlight them so you know what I'm talking about. And up at the top, we have a 3D printed plate. This is just to sort of hide all the components underneath. Um, this one here is an aluminum plate. So it's very thin, it's about two millimeters thick, uh, circular aluminum plate. Right here, this guy is the Peltier plate. So this is our solid state heat pump. I'll get into explaining how that works and what that is in a minute. This guy here is another 3D printed part that basically holds the Peltier plate in place. Underneath this fancy looking contraption is a CPU heat sink and fan. And so you can just get that at a local electronics store and I'll show you more details about that in a minute as well. And down at the bottom, this guy here is the housing that holds everything. It is also 3D printed. And so you have three 3D printed parts. Each of those I will make a description below. I'll send you links to all of those. Um, probably on Thingverse, something like that, so you can 3D print them yourself if you'd like to complete this project. But now we're going to dive into taking a quicker look at how all of these components come together to make that awesome glowing LED drink cooler. And so before we get started with the build, I want to very quickly talk about a Peltier plate, what it is and what it does. So a Peltier plate is a thermoelectric cooler, and this is just a solid state heat pump. It has two wires coming out of it, a positive and a negative wire. And when you apply DC voltage, you get a hot side and a cold side. However, without managing that heat flow, you'll end up with a burned up Peltier plate very quickly. The hot side will get very, very hot and you'll end up with a piece of junk. And so to manage that heat flow, we're gonna be using a heat sink. So this is a CPU heat sink and fan. You can see that it's got the Intel sign still on it. And you can see the Peltier plate that we're gonna be using on here for our project. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna draw heat away from the hot side and keep the cold side cool. The faster we can draw heat away from the hot side of this plate, the colder the cool side gets. So the trick is to manage the heat on the hot side. And so now that we have that brief explanation out of the way, we can take a look at the major parts that we need for this project. So in the top left hand corner here, you'll see the Peltier plate with the CPU heatsink and fan that I had mentioned earlier. It comes in one unit and I found this at my local hobby store. Over on the right hand side here, you can see several 3D printed parts, each of which I will provide the files for in the link in the description. So that'll take you to Thingverse and you can download these parts and print them yourself on your own printer. You'll notice that this part here already has a few small red LEDs pushed into the 3D printed part. I'll show you how I did that in the next few steps. Over here is a three inch diameter aluminum plate. It's two millimeters thick, which I believe works out to be about 14 gauge aluminum. And down at the bottom here, we have a power supply. So this is just a DC power supply supplying 12 volts at five amps max. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this oddly shaped 3D printed part and make sure we have it oriented in the correct direction. So you can see on the back, there is a circular recess and this is the direction of which the LEDs will shine. And so we've taken the rectangular LEDs, pushed them through the little rectangular holes and we are going to wire the LEDs in series. And so we have a positive and a negative lead connected here and soldered at the joint and we're gonna keep connecting all the positive and negative leads all the way around until we're left with a positive and negative lead loose on the end. And you can just choose one side to put your set of resistors on there. And I'll put the uh, equation up here on the screen as to how I figured out 
the resistance of these uh, for these LEDs. But basically, I have three resistors just because these are, the, these are values that I had on hand to make up the required resistance for 12 volts feeding these uh, five particular LEDs. So now that we've inserted the LEDs, soldered the leads for each of the LEDs together, and we have our cooling plate in place, you can see that I've taken the positive wire and run it through the little channel underneath these two leads here. The negative one will go over top of this lead, sort of pushing it down. And we're gonna take our glue gun, which you can kind of see there in the background, and flood the leads. We're gonna cover these in the glue just to insulate them because later on, we're gonna be putting an aluminum plate over top of this cooling plate and we don't want any of the leads shorting to that aluminum plate. So we're gonna insulate them with that glue. And so once we have all of the leads insulated with the hot glue, we wanna just take a very quick look at our work from the side and make sure no glue is sitting higher than the cooling plate because as I mentioned we're going to be putting an aluminum plate on top of here and we don't want any of the glue interfering with that aluminum plate and pushing it up and away from the cooling plate so we want full contact of the cooling plate if you have any glue that's sitting too high just take a razor blade and cut some of it off so with the cooling plate and the LEDs now in place in the holder we can apply a little bit of extra thermal paste to the bottom of this cooling plate. Now this is optional as your CPU will come with a dab of thermal paste already on it, but the surface area here is quite a bit bigger than the dab of paste that usually comes on these uh, little CPU heat sinks. And therefore a little bit of extra thermal paste won't hurt to transfer the heat better to our heat sink. And one thing you'll also notice is that there is sort of a round boss here on the heat sink and that corresponds with the round recess in this holder. So that's what's gonna locate it on the heat sink. And the other thing you'll notice is that these LEDs stick out a little bit from the bottom of this 3D printed part. And those LEDs are gonna find their way in between the fins. So it's basically gonna fit right in between. Everything's gonna snap down nice and snug when we locate this part. So we can go ahead and flip it over and try and get it so that those LEDs find their way in between those cooling fins. And it looks like I got it right. And so that plate should have nice contact with our heatsink and we're ready to wire the rest of this thing up. So wiring this thing is pretty easy. As I mentioned earlier, the cooling plate only has two wires, a positive and negative that require DC 12 volts. And when I was looking for my heatsink and fan combination, I was looking for a fan that also requires only 12 volts to run it. And that way they can be powered from the same source. The LEDs we wired in series and they require 12 volts. So we added those resistors so that they wouldn't burn up. So everything requires 12 volts. Now, if you look at the fan, if you're purchasing a different fan or a different CPU uh, heatsink and fan combination, some of your fans might come with a four wire connection and some might come with a three wire connection. If it's a three wire connection, the fan will only run at one speed and you'll apply your 12 volts to the positive and negative wires and you should be good to go. However, if you have a four wire fan like I do here, you can peel back the sticker and it might be a little hard to see in there, but usually on the PCB, it'll reveal which wires do what. So of course you're gonna need a positive and negative wire. And in my case, my positive wire is yellow. My negative wire is black. And if I look a little bit closer, there are two other labels in there, one for the green wire and one for the blue wire. My green wire has an S and my blue wire has a C. And those stand for control and sense. Now we're more interested in the control wire. So the blue wire here. So if I just apply 12 volts to this fan, it will turn on and it will start to spin, but it will set itself to a slower default speed. Now, if we want the full cooling capacity of this fan, then we're gonna have to kick things up a notch. When this is used inside of a computer, a four wire fan has the control wire sent a PWM signal. So it goes up to about five volts. 
In our case, we only want to run this fan at the full speed, so we need to send it a 5 volt signal. And to do that, we're going to be using this LM7805 voltage regulator. So that'll take our 12 volt signal and bump it down to 5 volts for that blue wire. Everything else will still get 12 volts, but our blue wire will get 5 volts. And to support this voltage regulator, all you need are two other components here, which are just two small capacitors. And I'll show you guys how to wire everything up. And so wiring this thing up should be a breeze. We have two wires, like I mentioned earlier, red for positive, black for negative, coming from our cooling plate. And I've crimped quick disconnect fittings onto the ends of each of these wires. For our power supply, I've done the same thing. There's a red for positive and a black for negative, so that was easy enough. And now that we know that our red is going to be positive, we can look at our 5 volt regulator, our LM7805, and we can take a quick look at our data sheet and we can see that it needs two capacitors. So you can see that I have a very small capacitor um, running from the input to the middle pin, which is our ground, and I have a slightly larger capacitor running from, again, the middle one, our ground, to the outer pin on the right-hand side, which is our output. And so we have input, ground, and output. And so we have 12 volts coming into our red wire here. And I've spliced off an orange wire to go to the input. You can see on the left-hand side. On the negative wire here, I've spliced off another wire, this blue wire, the dark blue wire. And that goes to the middle pin, which is our ground. And coming off of our output wire, so the one on the right-hand side, or rather output pin, I have a lighter blue wire. Now this is the lighter blue wire that I mentioned for, uh, that is used for the fan. So it's supposed to get that five volt PWM signal. And since we're sending it a solid five volts, it should kick the fan on to its highest setting. You can see that the green wire here, which was unused, is just been cut off and I'll tape that off and uh, put it aside. Coming off of our LEDs, it's the same thing. We have a positive and negative. And if you follow those around where I routed the wires, they end up getting spliced into the red positive 12 volt and the black negative. And so that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Before we start buttoning things up with all the 3D printed pieces, I'm gonna use a few tie straps and get these things out of the way off to the side make sure nothing is shorting out and we're ready to do the final assembly. And so lastly, our final assembly should be pretty straightforward. We're going to very carefully uh, place our assembly so far into this outer 3D printed ring. And you can see that there are bosses and those bosses indicate the top side of this ring. On the bottom side, they are completely flat. So the first thing that we gotta do is we have to just very carefully guide our connectors through the holes in this ring. So I'm gonna just take a second to do that here. And so once we've pushed those through, we can now just slip this assembly onto those bosses and just make sure none of the wires are pinched. Once all the wires are out of the way, it should sit nice and flat on top of those bosses and we're ready to move on to the second part of the assembly. And so in preparation for our final step, I've smeared a little bit of CPU thermal paste onto the Peltier plate and that's gonna aid in heat transfer from this aluminum plate uh, into the Peltier plate. Now it's just a very thin layer, you don't need a whole lot. And we're gonna place our plate on top, center it the best we can. You can kind of move it around a little bit and spread the paste on evenly. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our top 3D printed disc on top and we're gonna use our M3 screws to mount into the holes uh, on this outer ring, this 3D printed outer ring. Now on this 3D printed outer ring, you can run an M3 tap through those holes just to clean them up, but they're sized properly so that the uh, bolts should actually just cut their own threads into the softer plastic when you go to screw them in. And so if I place this on top, and actually you'll see on the bottom, there's a nice uh, locating ring for our aluminum plate. It should just slide over and we can find our holes, insert our screws 
and start threading them into place. With the bolts tightened down, we're ready to fire this thing up and test it out. And so finally, we've connected our power supply to our drink cooler and we're ready to test this thing out and make sure everything works. So firing up the power supply, the fan definitely just turns on. You can hear it kick on now. The LEDs are on. We are going to turn off a few lights in here, see if we can get that nice glow effect through our 3D printed case. And there you go, you can see it glowing. And we're gonna do a little bit of a test here. That plate is definitely getting cooler. And it's gonna take just a little while longer to get up to, or get down rather, to its coldest temperature. And so after about 30 seconds, this thing seems to have reached its minimum temperature and it is quite cold. I would compare it almost to holding an ice cube, just maybe not quite as cold as an ice cube. So it's probably somewhere above the freezing point, but it is time to put our drink on, get back to work and enjoy. And so that wraps up our drink cooler build. And I just wanna briefly talk about uh, the few things that I would change if I were to do this project again. And so the first thing I would change is definitely this outer casing. I left a lot of room for airflow through the casing. However, if you guys noticed in the video that the bottom fan sits almost on the tabletop when this thing is placed on the table. And so there really isn't an efficient uh, way for the air to flow through the bottom of the fan and then through the heat sink. And so in the design files that I provided you guys in the description down below, this outer casing is a little bit taller to more easily allow air to flow in through the bottom and then through the heat sink. So that should improve the efficiency of this thing just a little bit. And the second thing that I would definitely change is in this video, I used a 12 volt constant power supply. Now these Peltier plates work a little bit better if you're using a constant current power supply rather than constant voltage. And so by supplying this thing, uh, the 12 volts constant, it sort of leveled out around the three and a half amps. So it was drawing about three and a half amps where I think you could easily push about five amps through this thing to really maximize the uh, cooling of this plate. And so at three and a half amps, it was pretty cold. Like I said, it was almost as cold as touching an ice cube, but I think we could definitely do better by using a constant current power supply. So if you guys are building this thing, you might want to look into a constant current power supply, but just keep in mind, you might have to change some of the wiring for the LEDs because you won't want to push five amps through those LEDs. You'll definitely burn them out. And so that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys decide to build your own desktop drink cooler. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below.